Hello everyone, my name is Torn Leonard. I'm the co-founder of This Cozy Studio and the creator of Blend My NFTs. In this tutorial, we're just going to speed run through the process of creating an NFT collection using Blend My NFTs in Blender. There have been some new features I've added recently, so I just want to go over those really quickly. This isn't going to be an in-depth tutorial, so if you're looking for that, please check out our previous videos, and let's get into it. Okay, so uh, the first thing you you're going to want to do is go to this website here. Uh, this is just the GitHub repo where you can find all the code. This link will be in the description of our YouTube video. Uh, once you're here, we're just going to click on this big green code button and click download zip. We're going to download it as a, as a zip file here. Let's go to our web our, our desktop here and then open it in our desktop. We're going to get rid of that. We don't need it anymore. Uh, let's bring this folder here. I'm just unzipping the file we just downloaded. Let's open this and the first thing we're going to do is click on Cozy Robot Example. Alright, now that we have this open, the first thing you generally want to do when you're running a script in Blender is open a window and toggle the system console. This will log everything, every action that happens when you're running a script, including error messages. So it's a really useful debugging tool. And I highly recommend that you have it open whenever you're running a script. I always have it open, and it, it's, a, it's a really helpful tool. This is on Windows. Uh, there's documentation on Blender's API of how to use it on Mac. It's a bit more complicated. You have to open Blender from a terminal instead. Uh, Windows uh, has a convenient little toggle system button right there. So now we're going to head over to the scripting scripting tab right here. We're going to click open, and this should open the directory directly in the Blend My NFTs folder. If it doesn't, you can navigate around to it here in the system. Uh, let's go to source, and then open main.py. Now that we have main.py open, we can minimize Blender right now. We can also minimize the window. Let's go back here to this folder. We'll click on source, and then open config.py. This will open config.py in a uh, in a program called Visual Studio Code. It's a free open source IDE provided by Microsoft that you can download online. Uh, it's fairly easy to use. It's uh, got a lot of really neat features and cool things installed. So let's just go through and see what we have here. So first thing we're going to do is give our uh, NFT a name. So we're going to say robot. Uh, in this variable here, we're going to set the file format for the images to be PNG. Uh, we're going to set the animation format to AVI underscore JPEG. I don't really know what these um, what these animation file formats do. I'm not very familiar with them, uh, but uh, this one works as a as a video, so that's good. Uh, for model file formats, we're going to be doing a JLB, and we're going to need our Windows uh, Windows Path save file. So let's let's come back to this folder here. We'll go up a level click on this white space and then copy the path to the Blend My NFTs main file right there. We'll go back to Visual Studio Code, click on uh, this string right here, and just paste our path there. So that's all good. Let's click on the uh, max number of NFTs, uh, and let's say we'll generate 10. All right, so let's do 10. We're going to go to NFTs uh, per batch. So this will be the maximum number of NFTs that we'll generate. Now the NFTs per batch that we want to generate, let's set this to five, so we'll have two batches. And let's say we want to render the first batch. So we're going to be rendering the first batch. Uh, let's set images to true, since we want to generate images this time. We're also going to generate animations, so let's set animations to true, and 3D models. So we're going to generate all three. Um, so we've set all three of these variables to true. Now. I'm not going to go over rarity, that's a bit of an advanced topic, but there's some information on the readme file, and I believe there's an, is some information on that in the previous tutorial. Next we're going to go back to our Blender file, but first I just want to talk about this, uh, these lines right here, 61 to 62. Um, Th these are these are pretty new features, and this is sort of a third step to generating your NFTs, so you're going to run, run main.py and Blender three times, you're going to run it with the exporter off. This will generate a whole bunch of data about your NFTs, uh, which are which is defined by this up here. Um, then you're going to run it with the exporter on. This will actually generate the images, the animations, and the Blender uh, and the models uh, in Blender. Uh, and then you're, finally, you're going to run it with uh, refactor batches set to true. 
This will generate whatever metadata you want for your NFT collection, as well as combine all your batches into one convenient folder for you to upload to whatever service you use to um, to sell your NFTs. Uh, so uh, before we get too detailed into that, let's go back here to Blender. So just remember we set um, uh, all these things to true here. We also have our, our numbers set up and our file path, um, as well as the file formats and the name. So let's head over here to Blender. We'll go back here and we're just gonna hit run. I'm not gonna go over the, uh, the the collection format. There's a lot of information on the README page of how to, how to properly format all this, but um, just a note, it's really important that you get at the naming as well as this script ignore collection um, right, uh, because if you don't, the script will probably fail, and that's the biggest issue I've found uh, that people have with this with this script. So the naming is very important, uh, so just keep that in mind and read over the README file. Okay, so we ran this script once, um, and I guess as we can see down here uh, with the check mark, it says it's successful. So let's go over here to the system log and see what it did. Uh, so we can see here that it tells us the number of possible combinations is 144. That's good. We set the uh, the number of maximum NFTs to 10, uh, which means that it's uh, beneath this number, which is which is good. We didn't get an error there. Um, it says all possible uh, NFTs were generated in the NFT record 10 uh, in some second count. Doesn't really matter. That's so minuscule. Uh, to generate five DNA uh, sequences per batch with a total of 10 possible NFT DNA. Uh, this is just going over the batches, so it'll, it tells you that there are two batches. So let's, let's just confirm this in the uh, Blend My NFTs folder here. So what we just did is we generated this NFT record file. So if we open this, we can see uh, there's a whole bunch of information, and as you'll see here, there's a lot of stuff that looks very familiar. A lot of this stuff is actually visual, uh, visible here in the... Uh, in the scene collection, uh, all these names and all these uh, all these attribute and variant names are all stored here in this JSON file format. We can scroll down and see these uh, NFT DNA that define the actual NFTs themselves. Um, so I'm not going to talk too much about that. Let's go back and see what else we have. Uh, if we go to this um, batch JSON files here, and we'll notice that we have two JSON files. Ignore this dot get ignore file. It's just to help me upload code to GitHub. Um, but when you run the script, these files will all be ignored. Uh, so let's just click on the first batch. It looks very familiar. Uh, it's almost an exact copy. The only difference is we have five uh, uh, DNA here in our batch. And this is the same for, uh, for batch two, uh, five as well. Uh, but the DNA are different uh, than the previous batch. So let's get out of here. And let's go back to Visual Studio Code, uh, to the config file. We're going to set enable exporter to true. So now that's to true. Uh, this is enabled the exporter, which means that uh, images, animations, and models will be generated since we have all three of these set to true here. Uh, so let's go to Blender and click Run. The frames are a default of 250, which is uh, it's far too long for this simple tutorial. So I'll set it actually to five. So we're only rendering five images per animation. Um, okay, yeah. So I'm just back here in the scripting scripting tab. You can see what I've done here, um, and just run run it again. So yeah. Let's check out the window here. There we go. Okay, that's a lot faster. So. Let's go to this NFT output. Uh, we'll go batch animations, and we'll see where we've generated these a lot quicker now. Um, uh, so as we as we see here, we have all our animations. So we uh, have five animations per batch. We've generated batch one, so we have five. Um, if we go to blend my NFTs metadata here, we also have five uh, metadata's uh, for our robots. We go to images. We also have five images here. If we go up here to models, we also have five. Uh, models here and they're all different. They all have different um, properties. Some of them have uh, different colored uh, materials and all that. So let's go back up here um, and let's generate, try to generate the uh, the second batch. Let me go here. I'll set this to two. Now that we want to generate batch number two, uh, we'll set this to two. 
uh, we'll go back to Blender and we'll do the exact same thing and, and, uh, and click run. I, I always like it when I see the, um, the console running. It's, uh, it's very relieving after you've done a lot of coding and everything works on the first try. Usually doesn't work on the first try, but whatever. So now we have batch two here. Uh, so now we, we, f we finally have both our batches. Let me go up uh, one uh, directory here. We'll go back to the Visual Studio Code, uh, config.py file. Uh, and now we're gonna set uh, we're gonna set refactor batch order to true. And I want you to just pay attention to what's going on here. So uh, we have two batches here. Inside these batches, we have an animations folder, a, blend, uh, a metadata folder. Um, this is blend my NFTs metadata. It's not formatted to any blockchain. We also have images and models. So these are all stored separately. They're all numbered separately, one, two, three, four, five. And if we go back up here to batch number two and the images, and we have one, two, three, four, five, um, but they're not, they're not sort of continuous across each batch. So now that we've set refactor batch order to true, uh, let's say we want to generate Cardano metadata. We also want to generate Solana metadata. And let's say we want ERC721 uh, metadata as well. So we'll set this to true. This will turn them on. We also have num uh, turn nums off set to true, which I'll show you what that does in a second. But essentially what these will do is they'll generate metadata templates for uh, each of these metadata standards here, uh, Ethereum, Metaplex, and Cardano. Now, well, there's a there's a note here about that, so I won't get into that. So um, we have our batches here. Let's go back up here and see what happens. So let's just run this again in Blender. So all we're doing is running the same script here in Blender. Uh, let's click run. There we go. Okay, so I ran it another time, and the uh, the we get a message in the in the in the Blender system console here. So it tells us that all NFT files stored and sorted to the complete collection folder uh, in this directory here. So let's uh, minimize this. Oh, and we'll go here. And now we see that a complete underscore collection folder has been created in our blend my nfts folder here so let's go in here and see what we have and we have a lot of folders in here and i'll explain what they all what they all do in a minute uh let's let's check out the animations folder first so it's loading uh and as we see we have one through ten uh animations of our little robot here now uh, and this is really cool because it just organizes them all into one batch and cohesively numbers them and renames them again uh, we have uh, the same thing for blend my NFTs metadata. Uh, if we go to number six, we'll also see here that the name in number six has been changed uh, to six. So that's been reorganized as well. Uh, we also go down to the Cardano metadata and let's go to number six. Uh, and we see that the same thing happens here. We also see a lot of, um, a lot of the NFT variants and the NFT DNA has, have been stored in here. Um, and you can, you can play around with these in the, in the, metadata script file. Uh, we can also go down here and see the ERC721 data has been sorted and it's been created since we set these to true uh, in the config file. Uh, let's go back up here. Uh, we also have images here. These have all been sorted again. It's the same for models and uh, Solana metadata. Yeah, so that's all well and good. Uh, and I believe that's it for this tutorial. So that's the new method. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this has just been a quick tutorial, not, not very much detail and just sort of speed running it as I said. Um, but yeah, thank you.